I'm Ivan. I'm Jason. And this is DIY Detail. Today, we're going to be waterless washing this priceless Ferrari. Let's do so, it. So, Jason, yes. you're a, you know, if people don't know who Jason is, otherwise known as the Sandman, Jason is a connoisseur of cars. Yes. Yeah, very much so. But also a world-renowned finisher of cars, if I can put it that way. Sure, yeah, we yeah. can do that. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Jason has been uh, awarded many, many awards in this industry. The Riddler Award, Pebble Beach, any concourse you can think of, he's probably polished a car that's won there. Yep, And probably. Uh, but Jason also uses waterless wash. I love water. I've always used waterless wash because a lot of times the cars are being built or we can't move them outside or we just don't want to risk water. Right, right, exactly. So a waterless wash is a good way to get the car clean, get it going and, and start working on it. Exactly. And our waterless wash, we say, yes, we can wash a whole car with it. And this car, we always get told that you guys only clean, clean cars. Well, this one is pretty clean. This one's pretty clean, yeah. yes. But we're going to be polished it we want to make sure we have all the dust off of it this is a great use for waterless wash absolutely and okay. this car it's a like cars and coffee it's just about to go over the auction at uh, Barrett Jackson or wherever that again is a great use for waterless wash. yeah and I believe this car is all original and doesn't have very many miles on it so no it's, it's got less than 10,000 yeah miles, it's so. a very clean car uh, yeah. been well serviced and taken care of yeah it's got all the it's a black book service so meaning that every service that Ferrari recommends has been done which very few of Ferraris of this vintage are properly maintained yeah so off we go now using a waterless wash very simple I like to spray on the panel and just get enough that I get coverage, but I don't want to get the panel wet. Yeah. And then with one towel, we simply lift the dirt and dust off the surface. And actually, if you take a look at the towel, we have a line of dirt here. Got a little bit of dirt there. Yeah. And then take a second towel to buff it to a shine. Now you don't have to be in a rush for that buffing stage, it's not gonna streak, it's not gonna leave anything, you know, weird texture on the surface. But once it gets almost air dry, then we can just finish it off with the other towel and we have a nice clean surface. Yeah, and I'm a, I'm a little bit different. I like to spray the surface as well. Yeah. But also, just a little bit of mist on my towel. Perfect, nothing wrong with that. Now, one of the things that both Jason and I have observed over the years, there's no really right way of detailing. There's a lot of great ways to detail, but there's no absolute, this is the only way you should do something. As long as the car looks what it needs to look like at the end, it really doesn't matter how you get there. So if someone you're following online says that this is the only way to do it, it may not be the right way. <laughs> my uh, my good friend said there's more than one way to skin a cap. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if that's a good uh, terminology, but it was fitting at the time. No cats were harmed in the making of this <laughs> video. In other words, this wash makes a great glass cleaner as well. Now, do you like to use it as an all-in-one to clean wheels and interior as well? Yeah, you can use it on all those uh, surfaces. We actually like cleaning the cabinets in our bus with this. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it leaves absolutely. a bit of ceramic behind, makes hey. it easier to clean the next Mir time. Mirrors in your bathroom, maybe your shower, yeah. and that sort of thing. Exactly. Sure. Has a good scent to it. What am I smelling, Ivan? You're smelling a whole field full of blueberries. Wow. <laughs> Are we Oompa Loompas then? No, we could be. Okay. No. Yeah. Now I have that song stuck in my head. That's not a good thing. No, it's not. <laughs> we'll have to play some, some uh, other music for you. <laughs> so not many people have seen Jason washing a car. No. No, they normally see Jason sanding and polishing. And sanding, polishing, and at the show. Yeah, so exactly. The, the work part of it, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm here, I'm there. Yeah. Um, years ago, I was nicknamed the Phantom Polisher. Uh, you see my work, you, but you don't see me. And I'm right. everywhere and all where, you know, at the time. I think last year, um, I traveled most of the year. Yeah. Um, back and forth, 
Um, usually when people call me in, it's usually not necessarily a good thing. It's a 911. We're behind schedule now. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't have the necessary time that I would like sometimes. And that's sometimes that's just par for the course. Yeah. And, <clears throat> you know, the, the TV shows, the <clears throat> quote unquote reality TV shows, where you see people uh, hustling that last two hours because they have to deliver the car to the customer or the customer is coming to pick up the car or they have to put it in a trailer for the show. That's Jason's life. Yep. Very true. It's a rush uh, for sure, but uh, you know, sometimes it's, uh, it can be taxing. Well, you've done more than your share of uh, 24 or 36 hour days. I have, I yeah. have. It's not fun, but it's uh, it's definitely for the, the younger crowd, I would say. Because it is, detailing is fun, but when you do it for a living, it, it's, um, it, it can, it's pretty hard on the body uh, after so many years of doing it yeah. at a high level. Now, one of the big advantages of a waterless wash is doing like these cheese grater sides here. Yes. Do it with precision. We're not gonna have water dripping out of them for days. And especially on these grates on the back of the engine cover too. Yeah. This vehicle, there's just places that if we get water in, it's just gonna be a nightmare to try to get out, um, even if you can get it out. So it's just uh, working uh, smarter, not harder. And especially if you're on a time frame or a time crunch. Now in these grates, Ivan, do you spray product in there or do you spray on the towel? I spray just a very fine mist. Okay. But spraying on the towel is great as well. There's no, like we said, there's no, you know, 100% this is the only way you can do it. And there's no real wrong way of doing it. Well, there are wrong ways, but you know what I mean. Yeah, if it looks worse, that's a, that would be a considered yeah. a wrong way. And I actually saw this vehicle getting driven in, so it, it did drive in for wh wherever it came from. And I believe kind of that's the debris that we're seeing. It's nothing m other than that, no mud. Yeah. Uh, well taken care of vehicle. Yeah, and today we wouldn't want to drive it. Uh, we're having a bit of a snowstorm in Omaha today, so the roads are not exactly friendly to a car like this. And a lot, a lot of this, these types of cars, I always go for the mist areas that yeah. usually are typically mist. Um, when I'm at a car show or I look at some of the projects that I've done, I go to these areas because um, that's when you know someone's really taken the time and done as, as best as they can do. Um, so I, I start in the hard areas and work my way out. Excellent. Speaking of the hard areas, <laughs> the flying buttress. And someone has used water at some point in time on this because I can see some mineral spots in the hard to reach areas. Yeah. Who knows when it was cleaned or washed? Somewhere in the last 35, 34 years. Something like that, yes. Yeah. And they've waxed because around the Testarossa emblem, there's a bit of yeah. wax residue. And that is very typical. I mean, you've got to figure out what this car's seen and hands changed and yeah. just sitting. Who knows if cars could speak what kind of stories they would tell. Yeah, so back here with all these slits, it's uh, again, you can see the, the water. Yeah, the little droplets. Yeah, little droplets where someone washed it with a hose. And, and in the concourse world, uh, show world, that can, that can lose an award right there. Oh yeah, that's, uh, points are everything. And the judges have very, very good eyes. Uh, there was a, a show, uh, it was a, a custom car show. A gentleman had a beautiful roadster yeah. And it was competing against another car. I'm not sure what it was, but his car was dirty. So that car that was dirty lost. Yeah. And it was actually a better car. Right. But in the, you know, the concourse world, it's, the car has to be perfect. It has to be presentable. Yeah. Um, 
It doesn't have to be over detailed because the car is the car and the car will win for the car, but yeah. it has to be very presentable. Yeah, and it, you know, if you have original paint, that makes it worth more. And if your paint has flaws, but it's factory paint, it's worth more, or you get better points than a repaint, that's perfect, yeah. And a lot of these cars from the factory were far from perfect. No, far from perfect. But me being a Sandman, I don't like original. I like original paint for what it is because it tells a story. Right. But uh, every inkling in me wants to uh, make it better. Yeah, exactly. And you do make stuff a lot better. I try. Yeah. I try. It's, uh, it's a challenge for me. It really is. Well, you see things that... More, you know, mere mortals do not see. Yeah, that's a blessing, uh, but mainly a curse. Yeah. So back here we have a little more funk, a little more debris. Yeah. Even the exhaust tips are clean. Yeah. On the inside. Yeah. Well, it's a very, you know, very well maintained, very clean car. And with the mileage it has, it better be or lack of mileage for that. Sake. Yeah. In all my travelings, you would be surprised sometimes, even I'm surprised, you go into a, a garage like this, which is really cool, Yeah. and all of a sudden you have this collection of cars that doesn't fit the building. No, exactly. And it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. So sometimes in these tight areas, I just feather the trigger. Yeah. Just to control my my liquid. Yeah, and now that the the wash house is a little damp, I can get it, you know, in the crease between the yeah the lights and all that. Get in and clean where the car hasn't been cleaned in a long time. And this is the time to really look at the car um, for loose. Uh, parts, pieces, missing parts, pieces. Yeah. Uh, larger nicks, scratches, gouges. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, uh, yeah, like the little horsey here. <laughs> yeah, the horse, horse is a little loose. Wants to jump off that grill. Oh. And again, we've got water. Yeah. Ooh. Thankfully, they haven't baked in the sun, so they just wipe off. But. Getting in there, making sure. Now, waterless washing is very much precision washing. You can place the product where you want it. You can clean where you need to. Well, and you're not ahead of yourself. Um, I've even noticed using a rinseless wash, you know, standard type. You yeah. Know, if it's hot outside or you're doing a quick, sometimes you can get ahead of yourself. Yeah. And that's that's one thing I've seen is, and even even myself. Sometimes I can get ahead of myself, and uh, you can get yourself in trouble if you get ahead of yourself. Or just miss spots. Yeah, exactly. And with the spray and wipe of a, a waterless wash, of course you can, you can still get ahead of yourself, yeah. but it's easy to, to solve those issues. And you can concentrate on just one piece at a time. And if you do miss a spot, or you don't like it, just go back and you know, yeah. Squirt Squirt a little bit more on the surface and keep on going. And these were really, really big tires at the time. 18 inch wheels. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine, I don't even know what the MSRIP for the tires were, but they weren't cheap. No, but today an 18 inch wheel you find on a, it's, on a, on a it's, conning car. It's not even standard, maybe on a Kia or something like that. Yeah. And if I'm detailing with a, you know, a couple of team team members or a couple of guys, what we do is we go over we go over each other's work just yeah, to check it and exactly. make sure. Yep. Uh, and, and it's not that anybody missed anything particularly. It's just that second, third, fourth set of eyes. You know, you see things differently. Yeah. And you can be approaching the vehicle from a different angle, and just that change of angle allows you to see something you didn't see exactly. Before. It even smells of classic Ferrari in here. Oh yeah, has the distinct leather smell. Thankfully, I can fit my whole arm up in here. Yeah. Get all I, the way, all the way back. I guarantee you, the designer that designed this car wasn't thinking about cleaning and polishing these slits. No. Yeah, a car like this, 
being that it's so nice uh, and it's a factory condition, uh, anything we do to fart is clean it and get the little parts and pieces where someone would take a flashlight and look. Yeah. Uh, if it's clean and presentable, it'll do well. Exactly. Uh, perfection is not really, um, it's really not even possible on a car like this because it wasn't perfect from the factory. No, the uh, yeah, Ferrari's uh, one of the, the tags I've always heard and a salesman told me this once is you never buy a Ferrari for the paint, you buy it for the engine. Yep. It's uh, one, just one of those purchases. Even the door shut, that's a sign of a, a really good car. Yeah. It's solid. Yeah, it's solid. There's no, no rattles. No sagging in the uh, hinges. Yep. Uh, latches are good, clean. Uh, the first thing I noticed, actually, my eye went to the interior. Yeah. Of how clean and presentable it is. No, the interior is in great shape. Uh, the seats are, you know, typical of a Ferrari of this age. The seating position isn't the greatest, but it is what you have. So It's a Ferrari. Yeah, so. exactly. With that, if you like this video, we have a lot of other videos. And if you have questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, leave them below. Jason will be monitoring, I'll be monitoring, and we'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, you might want to watch the video right here.